I, I got to be honest with you. I'm feeling a resistance in the house today. Some of you, you know you're waiting, so the weight of waiting is weighing you down. I could feel it. I could feel it because you, you, you want to praise him and you want to say you're finding your strength, but the weight of waiting is weighing you down. Anybody just getting a little tired of waiting? Come on, let's just be honest. Let's have an honest moment. Are there some things you've been praying for that you haven't seen manifest yet? I, I, who am I talking to right now? Here's what I need you to know. Scripture says he inhabits the praises of his people. Scripture also says we bring the sacrifice of praise to him. <laughs> so what is a sacrifice? It means I don't have it or I don't want it, but I give it anyway. So you might be weighted down because you're weighing, but I want you to praise him right from that place of being weighed down, of being tired of waiting. Praise him from right in that place. Come on, no, no. Give God the praise. Let him know you believe in him. Let him know you trust him. Who am I talking to right now? Go ahead and give him praise. Who am I talking to right now? Praise him like you know it's happening. Praise him like it's already done. Praise him like the check is in the mail. Praise him like the deal is already done. Praise him like your new place you signed the lease. Praise him like your new car you're driving in it right now. Who am I talking to right now? Praise God. Hey. Stop. Ah. Why do we do this? Uh-oh. 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 You feel the shift in the atmosphere? Do you feel the shift in the atmosphere? Come on. That's it. Wait on the Lord. Ah. Uh, wait on the Lord. Come on, somebody. Come on. He will renew your strength. Yes. Come on, somebody. Wait on the Lord. Come on. Let heaven hear you. Yeah. Wait on what? Come on. We're going to wait on who? What will he do? Come on, somebody. Yes. So wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because see, I know we live in an Instagram uh, generation where we want it instantly. <laughs> and, and, and if our Wi-Fi takes five seconds, we're impatient. <laughs> but don't let the impatience with your internet become the impatience in your spirit. God is trying to bring to you something he has to prepare for you. It takes time. Go ahead and give God thanks for the time. Right now, he is preparing what you're praying for. Right now, he is delivering what you've been asking for. But you got to get out of you, and you got to get into him. Get out of yourself, get out of your feelings, and praise God. Like you know he is who he said he is. Like you know he's done what he said he would do. Hey! I feel it. Yeah, 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 now you're getting free. You feel that? Now you're getting free. And who the sun sets free is free indeed. Now the spirit is breaking out in here. You, you got to push through your problems. You got to push through your anxiety. You got to push through your frustration. And know that God is a God who will not allow his word to return to him void. Hey. Uh-oh. 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 Did, did the spirit from women involved in Dallas find its way here? Is this, what, is this the men and women involved at the same time? Because I feel God's presence in the house. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. I just got off a plane. 40,000 women giving God praise. Can we take one more minute to give God praise? Wait on the Lord. Hey. Come on now. Come on now. Yes. 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 <laughs> if you can't tell, I'm excited. 
I got off the plane from Dallas. I said, Lord, I just got to go preach the word. I just got to, I just got to do what you called me to do because I've seen an experience where when we get on one accord and when we come into the place of God and we worship God, miracles happen breakthroughs happen I don't know who I'm talking to how many need a breakthrough in your life right now come on come on how many are waiting for God to deliver what only he can deliver amen so if you are waiting it because you're in the right place they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength huh. somebody you're getting stronger right now because you've been waiting so long come on you're getting stronger right now because you've been waiting on God you're getting stronger right now because you've been waiting on God hey he will renew your strength. So wait. I say, listen, we, we got we to transition to the word. We got to transition to the word. We got to transition to the word. Only thing I want you to know is God loves you. He's got a plan for you. You're not here by accident. You're here by divine appointment. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm glad you're here. Turn to your other neighbor and say, I'm glad you're here. You may have your seat if you can. Woo. Wait on the Lord. Woo, I'm going to wait on you. Jesus. Woo. Waiting on God is one of the hardest things we do. But it builds the most character. Amen. Amen. I know you've been waiting. But I'm letting you know somebody who's here, God is getting ready to deliver. <laughs> the only thing I ask you to do is to get ready no 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 you need to get ready you got to prepare yourself to receive what he has get ready turn to your neighbor and say it's time to get ready no no turn to your other neighbor and say no it's really time to get ready <laughs> okay let us pray dear heavenly father I pray right now that you would deliver the word, Lord, as only you can do. I pray that you would come into the house, dear God, and open our hearts and minds so we may receive everything you have for us. This is our prayer. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 It is, it is, I'm telling you, like being in Dallas and experiencing Woman of All, first of all, let's give it up for Pastor Sarah Jakes Roberts. Let's give it up for Pastor Hooray. Amen. My brother and sister, and it was an honor to be in the house yesterday participating on the He Said What, which was the men's panel. They let us in. <laughs> and I'm still trying to think, was it a, did they regret it or was it actually a reward? You know. Um, but here's what I know. God is moving in this generation like never before. And I want each of you to be a part of it. I want you to be a part of it. And the way to be a part of it is to get closer to him than you ever have before. I've seen God doing things in the kingdom that I've never seen before. I'm seeing him open doors that have never been opened before. So I pray that you would open the door to your heart in this season. Now, I'm, uh, this sounds crazy. This is the best season to be Christian in life. Come on, this, this is the best season. Come on, this is the best season. Amen. So um, how many of you have been following as I've been here, you know, over the past few months, the one of one series, the one of one series? Has it been a blessing to you? For real, has it been a blessing? Amen. So, so as I've been in this series, for those of you that don't know what the series is about, when I say you are one of one, it means you're worthy. It means you're valued. It means you're valuable. It means there's no one else that was created like you. And when you know better, you must do better for yourself. When you are one of one, you take individuality and independence and authority and confidence over your own life. When I say you're one of one, I'm not saying you shouldn't want to be in a, in a relationship or a couple, but a couple is only as strong as the two singles that make up the couple. And when I say a one of one, I'm becoming stronger as a single so that when I am joined with someone, I'm not asking them to do something for me that I don't do for myself. When I say you're one of one, it means you are powerful. It means you are creative. And if I had one hope for this generation, it's that we would take full authority over who God has called us to be and stop allowing others to define who we are and stop allowing others to make us happy, make us sad. No, I'm going to stand in the power of who God created me to be and I will be the keeper of my happiness and the creator of my joy. I don't know who I'm talking to right now because so often 
We buy into the idea that if our relationship status was better, we would be better. It's not true. If you are happy now, you'll be happy whenever you're in a relationship. If you're not happy now, you won't be happy then. Amen? Amen. So the whole purpose of one of one is to be empowered and to empower this generation in the power of your uniqueness. I've seen so many people compromise who they are just to be with somebody who doesn't appreciate who they are. Isn't that ironic? We compromise who we are to be with somebody who doesn't even appreciate the compromise. And then we want to know why we're not happy because we're not being the fullness of who we were created to be. You may not be everybody's taste, and that's all right. Turn to your neighbor and say, I ain't for everybody. <laughs> Turn to your other neighbor and say, everybody ain't for me. <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with that. One of your challenges may be you're trying to be everything to everybody, and you're not being something to yourself. So when I say you're one of one, I'm saying you, you li- listen, people better act right. Because God, God didn't create no one else like you on this planet. People better act right. Come on now. So when I say you're one of one, I'm saying, ooh, you better watch out. You better watch out. So as I've been in this series, God has taken me through the book of Ruth. And and today this is going to be part four. And it's basically called shoot your shot. Shoot your shot. (laughs) Some of y'all like, wait a minute, I'm a little scared. What if they say no? It's all right. We're going to deal with that. Turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, you got a shot to shoot. Come on now. All right, let me get into the word, because we don't have a lot of time. Y'all saying a whole lot more than I ask you to say. I want to start with chapter 2, and I'm going to try to read through this and pull out what God has for us. And there's going to be some parts of this message directed directly to men, some directly to women, and then other parts that will be more general, all right? Because if anything, by being one of one and understanding that, I believe it actually improves the quality of our relationships. Because we have two individuals who are coming together for a greater purpose. If I don't know how to be one of one with me, I won't know how to be one of one with you. Amen? So one of one plus one of one equals one of one. So let's get back into the story of Ruth. (laughs) Y'all like, what? (laughs) Well, you know, Scripture says, you know, that one plus one equals one. Go back to Genesis 2. Okay. Uh, uh, Chapter 2 of Ruth. uh, the The first verse says, Now Naomi had a relative on her husband's side. From the clan of Elimelech, a man of standing whose name was Boaz. Now, the writer, and people say, believe uh, that Solomon wrote the book of Ruth, he is giving us context. We haven't yet got into the, the next chapter or the next scene, but there's context here that now Naomi had a relative on her husband's side from the clan of Elimelech, a man of standing whose name was Boaz. Do you know what a man of standing is? A man of standing is a man of integrity, a man of character, a man of wealth, a man of strategy, a man of power, a man of compassion. Before I go any further, are there any men of standing in the house of God this morning? No, no, no. Is there any man that is, that's a man of standing that will stand right now? You do what you say you're going to do. Come on, who am I talking to? You are who you say you are. You're a man of character. You can take your word to the bank. Who am I talking to right now? Because see, so often the culture wants you to believe there are no good men. That is a lie. Look at the men of standing, standing on the word of God right now. Who am I talking to right now? Uh Uh-uh, no, we're breaking myths today because so often we as men get a bad rap. There are good men who will do what they say they will do. Look at them. You may be watching online, and if you're a man of standing, go ahead and stand. Stand in the chat. Hey, come on, somebody. Who am I talking to right now? I just want to pause to the men that are standing. If you are a man of standing, stand with me real quick. I want you to know that God sees your heart. God knows what you've been going through that nobody else knows. I need you to know that if Jesus wept, it's okay for you to cry too. I need you to know that vulnerability leads to victory. Transparency leads to transformation. And I want to applaud you for standing when nobody believed in you. I want to applaud you for standing when others turn their back on you. 
when you said, hey, I'm not going to the club and they abandoned you, but God didn't. So I just want to thank you as a man of standing from one man of standing to another man of standing. I see you, I love you, and I appreciate you. Give it up for the men of standing. You may have a seat. You may have a seat if you can. Mm-mm. We didn't come to play today because there's too many myths. And too many things in the culture that are disrupting how we and men, men, how men and women come together. And we've got to break down these ideas and break down these barriers so the truth can come through. As we spoke about in the last session, this idea that people say, oh, you know, dating is trash and everybody just goes along with that. Well, what we're saying then is anything we speak against can't work for us. Okay, I'm going to talk to this side. Anything we speak against can't work for us. All right. So there may have been some experiences out there that may not have been to your liking, but please allow only life to be in your tongue. Come on. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. So when you speak against something that you want to work for you, it doesn't work for you. It's okay to say, hey, my experiences to date have not yet been at the standard that I want to live. But I am believing God that there is an experience that is not just at my standard, but above it. Amen. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Who are we talking to? Oh, man. Y'all, there's so much in this word. And, and it, this is the exact same thing that happened in the 9 o'clock. I get so excited. God gives me so much. And I look up and say, wow, we got 25 minutes left. Okay. We're going to try to do this and cut the ends off on both sides. Set fire in the middle. All right. Verse 2. And Ruth, the Moabitess, said to Naomi, Naomi is her mother-in-law, let me go to the fields and pick up the leftover grain behind anyone in whose eyes I find favor. So she's basically saying, and if you go back to chapter one, uh, Ruth and Naomi went from um, Moab to Bethlehem because Bethlehem, God had returned his favor to Bethlehem and that's where Naomi was from. And so Ruth was a Moabite and she chose to leave her people to uh, commit to her assignment, which was Naomi, and they got to Bethlehem at the time of harvest, okay? So that's the context. And what Ruth is saying is, let me go to the fields and let me work. She doesn't say, let me go pick up a man. Okay, I'm going to talk to this side. She doesn't say, she doesn't say, let me go to the fields and pick up a man. It doesn't mean she didn't want a man, but she had prioritized her purpose. She said, let me go to the fields and pick up my purpose because I got work to do. I got to talk to somebody right now. It's okay to prioritize your purpose. It's okay to acknowledge you got work to do. Just because you're not with somebody don't mean that you're out of order. You actually might be right where God wants you to be. It's okay to pick up your purpose and let God handle your dating life when he chooses to handle it. Stop being upset because you are on your purpose and others are out there dating. Everybody's on a different timeline and that's all right. Ruth said, I'm going to the field to pick up my purpose. I've got work to do. It's amazing to me that immediately when she gets to Bethlehem, her commitment to Naomi is so great. She says, I'm going to go do the work, and I'm going to let God take care of what he's going to do. Now, watch this. This is amazing. Naomi said to her, go ahead, my daughter, verse 3. So she went out and began to glean in the fields. Basically, gleaning meant that the harvesters would harvest, and whatever scraps there were, if you were gleaning, you would be picking up the scraps, all right? So she went literally to work behind the harvesters of the field. As it turns out, she found herself working in a field belonging to Boaz, who was from the clan of Elimelech. Hmm. But in the scripture, when it says, as it turns out, you know what that means? It says, as destiny would have it, <laughs> as fate would have it, <laughs> she found herself <sighs> with... She did not set out to go to Boaz's field. Mm. She was following God. She was following her assignment. And God, something in her directed her right where she needed to be because she was setting herself up to be blessed in a way she wasn't even aware of. This is why you got to get into your assignment because when you're in your assignment, when you are in your purpose, it's like a magnet. It takes you everywhere you're supposed to be. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but you've been worrying about everything else. Just get in your purpose. Just get in your assignment. Everyone and everything you need is in your assignment. 
And God is working on our behalf to set it up even when we don't even are aware of it. God is working through Ruth right here and she's not even aware of it. Do you realize what God is doing to set you up for the very thing you've been praying for? He is working through you even when you're not aware of it. He brought you here to set you up for what he's about to do. You don't even realize it. Some of you came to this church and you think you just came to church. And God's like, no, 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 no. I'm putting you in a house with like-minded believers because I'm about to make some Holy Ghost connections here. that are going to elevate careers and save lives and, and produce healing and produce finance. Who am I talking to? God sent you here to set you up. Oh, even when we're not aware of it. We will be drawn to people, circumstances, and situations. And even we will say, why am I here? I just have to follow what I feel. I got to follow the Holy Spirit. Mm, uh, Lord, I don't want to say this. No, I don't want to. <laughs> okay, see? Okay, okay. All right. This, this is why, again, when I say you're one of one, I also say you're an adult and you can make the decisions you want to make for your life. Right? I will give you information, I will give you perspectives, but ultimately you have to make a decision. This is one of the things why you have to be careful how you uh, nurse your pain. Because when you are taking substances in that take you out of a sound mind, okay, uh, I'm gonna talk to the back because they lost me up here. So, you know, if you are drinking and, and, and taking in things that alter your perception, you may miss what God is trying to do. The Lord did not give us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. A sound mind to make sound decisions. I'm just saying you got to be careful what you use to anesthetize the pain or to have fun in a moment because the moment could take you off course. I got to go. I got to go. I'm saying too much. Uh-oh. I said too much. I'm sorry. But I'm not really sorry, but I'm kind of sorry. <laughs> We got to keep going. We got to keep going. Verse 4. Just then, Boaz arrived from Bethlehem and greeted the harvesters. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you, they called back. Verse 5. Boaz asked the foreman of his harvesters, whose young woman is that? Talking about Ruth. <laughs> it's interesting, right? Here he is surveying his field, and he recognizes there's someone there that he is not aware of. He notices her. He sees her. To the men of standing, let me give you a tip. If you really want the right woman in your life, you got to start seeing her. <laughs> okay, all right. All right, we might need to call the Uber to get me up out of here, but I'm just trying to tell you the truth. I'm trying to tell you the truth. Because see, yesterday a question was asked at the panel, how do you know a toxic man? And I said, here's how you know. A man that demands to be served, but is not of service. That's how you know. So for men of standing, you want the right woman in your life. See her for who she is. Not for what she does. Not for who you want her to be. See her for her. I promise you to the men of standing in the house and they're watching online. When you see a woman for who she is, it unlocks something in your relationship. Not who you want her to be, but who she is. Ladies, if I'm saying something wrong, please let me know. Do you agree with what I'm saying? Let the men stand and hear you. Okay, all right. Just making sure we're in this thing together. Okay, all right. Let me keep going. Boaz noticed Ruth. The foreman replied. Uh-oh, spirit's breaking out over here. <laughs> I love, this is why I love one church. We have such a good time, don't we? Okay, the foreman replied, she is the Moabitess who came back from Moab with Naomi. Now, the foreman is given a report on who Ruth is. She said, talking about what Ruth told the foreman, please let me glean and gather amongst the sheaves behind the harvesters. She steadily, from morning until now, except for a short rest in the shelter, she has been in the field. So the foreman is giving a character report on Ruth. She has been here longer than those that are being paid to do it. Hmm. So, Boaz, I'm telling you, you might be upset that there, I've allowed someone who doesn't belong, but I'm telling you, she's worthy. Hmm. 
Verse 8, so Boaz said to Ruth, my daughter, listen to me. Don't go and glean in another field and don't go away from here. Stay here with my servant girls. Verse 9, watch the field where the men are harvesting and follow along after the girls. I have told the men not to touch you. I have told the men, hands off. I have instructed the men, we are here to protect, not neglect our women. I have instructed the men that in order for this to work, we have to put a hedge of protection around the women of God. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but we as men of standing got to do a better job creating protection for God's women. And what that means is Boaz is not trying to get it, Ruth. He is trying to create an environment for her help and for her healing and for her growth. And so often as men, we're taught to get what we need from a woman. And if they give it, keep on moving. But as men of standing, we got to change the narrative. We got to start creating protection. And what does that mean? That isn't just about fighting and all that. No. What about protection where the woman can be who she is? What about protection where there's emotional safety? What about protection where there's spiritual safety? What about protection where there is, uh, 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 what's, the, what's the word when you go to therapy? Uh, uh, psychological safety. Amen. Hallelujah. We got to start protecting any woman that comes into our field. To men of standing, when a woman comes into your field, is she coming into a field of help or a field of harm? Oh, oh okay, okay. Yep, yep. You see, God just, I'm just telling you that what God told me to tell you. Because see, here's what happens. Sometimes as men, when our intent is not known to a woman and we have an ulterior motive, they have entered into a field of harm and they, don't, they aren't aware. Because they're entering in the field thinking it's one thing. But sometimes men have a different agenda, as do women have a different agenda. I would highly encourage anyone here, if you are in a circumstance or situation where your true feelings are not being known, let the person know today. Oh, yeah, yeah. See, it's cool. It's cool. Y'all don't want to clap because you're getting something from that, that person and you don't want to mess up the flow. But I am here to mess up your flow. Why? Because that flow could be flowing you right out of where God wants you to be because you have an ulterior motive and agenda that is causing harm to the person that's in your field and they don't even know it. Mm. What's the difference between a good guy and a bad guy? A good girl and a bad girl. A, 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 bad, a good guy... Right? A good guy will tell the truth. A bad guy can look like a good guy because he's not telling the truth. So don't mistake a good guy by how we dress. Mm -mm. Mistake a good guy by what he does. What he says. Can you see integrity backing up his actions? I don't know who I'm talking to right now. But I got to get back to the word. I got to get back to the word. Protection. And then whenever you are thirsty, go and drink from water from the jars of men that have been filled. Verse 10, and she bowed down with her face to the ground. She exclaimed, why have I found such favor in your eyes that you notice me, a foreigner? Verse 11, Boaz replied, because I saw your Instagram feed. <laughs> I saw what you've been posting lately, and I resonated with it. <laughs> watch this we're going to come right back to that watch this Boaz replied I've been told all about you what you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband how you left your father and mother and your homeland and came to live with the people you did not know before may the Lord repay you for what you have done may you richly be rewarded by the Lord the God of Israel under whose wing you have come to take refuge why is Boaz giving Ruth favor because of her character because of her integrity he said your integrity is real sexy I'm going to let you know. Your character is very hot to me. Because see, mm, okay, okay, all right, okay, see, we, okay, Lord, why do you want me to tell the truth? I don't want to tell the truth. Because if I tell the truth, I just got to put my own business out there, and I don't like doing that. Okay, but here's what happens. Sometimes we get, we get tripped up, right? So, so when you go to someone's Instagram page, and again, you're an adult, post whatever you want. All I'm saying is that whatever bait you're putting out is the mate that's coming in. I'm going to talk to this side one more time. So if you want different mate, then they got to put different bait. So what happens is so often we misunderstand that for us as men, a woman of character is sexy. 
But so often as men, we get caught up sometimes looking for the wrong thing. Okay, man, I ain't got Okay, I'm, I'm, I, I, anybody been there before? Okay, okay. So I'm, okay, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it, man. Anybody, come on, okay, all right. Glad I ain't out here hanging myself, okay. All right, so, you know, I, I told the nine o'clock this, so I don't want to leave y'all out, so I'll tell you my business. Okay, so, so a while ago, a while ago, um, <laughs> A while. <laughs> a while. <laughs> a long time ago. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> a while ago, um, you know, I was, I was dating uh, this woman, you know, and, and uh, you know, hey, she was bad, right? She was bad. I mean, and uh, Instagram page, and, and the, feed, the feed was popping. <laughs> and so she, she had a picture on there that, you know, it, it was a thirst trap. I mean, come on, y'all know. Okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, I wish, we, I wish we could audit everybody's Instagram page right here. I wish we could. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So watch this, watch this. So, so you know, but I, but I was like, hey, I, I'm, I understand what's on the page. And, and hmm, okay, maybe that's, she, maybe she, maybe for my taste, that's, she's showing a little much. But, but, but she got a good heart. Come on. She, she, come on. <laughs> she, she, you know, she, she go to church. She a woman of God. Okay, so it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. So we, we were kicking it, you know, hanging it for a couple months. Everything was going great. You know, talking every day. Everything's beautiful, wonderful. So I still look at her. I go back and I look at her Instagram page, and the same picture that, that I called a thirst trap was still on the page, and it was pinned. It was pinned. It was pinned. <laughs> okay, I got it. Y'all, woman of all messed me up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm just too free today. Okay. So I asked her a question. I said, hey, um, again, you're a grown woman. Post whatever you want. Can I just ask you a question? She said, yes. I said, is this particular picture, would you say this qualifies as a thirst trap? I asked a question. Why are we so afraid to ask questions? Come on. Questions just give us understanding. Some of you right now, you're dating people that you have not asked enough of. Ask some questions. Don't be afraid of making them uncomfortable. Well, I feel like I'm in an interrogation. Well, you are, because I want to know who you are. (laughs) And how am I going to know who you are if I don't ask some questions? So I'm sorry if you don't want me to get to know you, but I'm going to ask the questions I need for my comfort level. Okay, so, 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 oh, man, you got Yes, y'all just give me a little more time, please. Okay, so, 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 she said, yeah, okay, yeah, it is kind of a thirst trap. I said, okay, okay. So I asked her a question. I said, well, if you worked at a restaurant, right, and the restaurant closes at 7, but the, uh, the open and close sign was still listed as open, and people kept coming in 8, 9, 10 o'clock, and you started to say, well, why are you coming in? We're closed. But as long as the sign says open, people come in. So if you wanted people to stop coming in, wouldn't you turn the sign to close? I said, so hey, I- I'm not telling you what to post, but if you're posting a trap that says you're open and we've been dating for months what does that say about the business you're running now listen you can run whatever business you want maybe i'm not your cup of tea but i don't want to be a part of that business and i had to get out of that thing because it was not going to work for me because once you had that sign i said there's a disconnect between what you want and what my experience is anybody been there before oh boy we about to mess up some Instagram feeds today. <laughs> Again, she can post what she wants. I was just saying, oh, well, if you still are taking applicants, if you still, that's cool. I just don't want to be a part of that. That's not what I want to do. That's not the business I'm running. Right? So Boaz looks at Ruth and says, wow, you have tons of character. That's why I'm attracted to you. That's why I have favor for you. I am not trying to do anything other than set you up because of who you are. This is what Boaz is saying. Then she says in verse 13, this is Ruth talking. May I continue to find favor in your eyes, my Lord? She said, you have given me comfort and have spoken kindly to your servant, though I do not have the standing of one of your servant girls. Let's go to verse 17. So Ruth gleaned in the field until evening. Then she threshed the barley she had gathered and it amounted to an ephah. An ephah is, a, is like basically a basket of barley that weighs about 30 pounds. She carried it back to town. She carried it back to town. She didn't ask Boaz for help. She didn't ask the foreman for help. 
She carried what was her to carry. I just want to speak to the women in the house that you've been carrying what you've been supposed to carry. I just want to talk to you because what you've been carrying, nobody knows the weight of what you've been carrying. Who am I talking to right now? Nobody knows the strength required to carry what you've been carrying. So I just want to affirm every woman in the house who's watching online that God sees what you've been carrying. And he knows the strength that's building in you. And I'm here to tell you, you will not have to carry it alone if you choose not to. I believe that if you want somebody, God has someone for you. I believe that. But I want you to know that you are seen. And you are not carrying what you're carrying without God bearing witness to what you have sown. We move forward. She carried it back to town, and her mother-in-law saw she had how much she had gathered. Ruth also brought out and gave her what she had left over after she had eaten. Verse 19, her mother-in-law asked her, where did you glean today? Where did you work? Blessed be the man who took notice of you. Blessed be the man who took notice of you. Not you are blessed because he noticed you. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Blessed be the one who saw that you were one of one and appreciated it. That person is blessed because they recognize that you are a daughter of God. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but you're not blessed because someone noticed you. The person that noticed who you are is the one who is blessed because it's a blessing to notice you. It's a blessing to see you. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but a woman of God is a blessing to behold. A woman of character is a blessing to behold. I don't know who I'm talking to, but a woman of integrity? Blessing. Hey, I just want to know to the men of standing, have you seen a woman of integrity lately? Heck yeah. <laughs> and aren't you blessed? <laughs> All right, we got to keep going. Then Ruth told her mother-in-law about the one at whose place she had been working. The name of the man I worked with today is Boaz, she said. Verse 20, the Lord bless him, Naomi said to her daughter-in-law. He has not stopped showing his kindness to the living and the dead. She added, that man is our close relative. He is one of our kinsmen redeemers. What does that mean? In this patriarchal society at that time, when a husband died, it was usually up to the brother to then marry the widow so that the lineage would continue and the inheritance would stay in the family. But in this instance, um, Naomi's two sons died, so she had no more heirs directly from her. But Boaz was in the bloodline of Elimelech, of the husband. So it was possible that Boaz could ultimately help redeem the family story. Here's what was amazing. In the first chapter, Naomi told Ruth, I can't help you. I don't have another son. You should go back. Ruth said, no, I'm going to go forward. As she went forward and committed to her assignment, she walked right into a scenario that God was setting up. Even though Naomi didn't have the power, God did. Even though Naomi didn't see how it was going to work out, God did. This is why you got to stay on your path. Because even when you don't know how it's all going to work, God does. Who am I talking to right now? Anybody to testify that God knows even when you don't know. Even when they don't know. God knows. He knows where you are. He knows where you're going. He knows what you need. He knows who you need. He knows when you need. Why don't you just keep moving in the direction that he's called you to move and let him do his thing? <laughs> then Ruth the Moabite said, he even said to me, stay with the workers until we finish. I want to fast forward to chapter 3, verse 1. One day, Naomi, her, her mother-in-law, said to her, my daughter, should I not try to find a home for you where you would be provided for? Is not Boaz with, those, with whose servant girls you have been a kinsman of ours? Tonight he will be winnowing barley on the threshing floor. Wash and perfume yourself. This is what the word says. <laughs> and put on your best clothes. Then go down to the threshing floor, but don't let him know you are there until he has finished eating and drinking. When he lies down, note the place where he is lying. Then go and uncover his feet and lie down. He will tell you what to do. Naomi is telling Ruth, it's time to shoot your shot. <laughs> I'm in trouble. Oh, I'm in trouble. I'm over my time. I just need a few more minutes. 
Naomi is telling Ruth, it's time to shoot your shot. It's time to take this to the next level. It's time to get out of your comfort zone. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> it's time to get out of your comfort zone. But, but here's where most of us spend our life. The tension between rejection and selection. We want to be selected, but we're so afraid to be rejected that we never put ourselves in a position to receive what God has. Because we're so afraid. What is, re what is rejection? It is the, the refusal to accept. We are so conditioned to accept or need other people's acceptance that we don't put ourselves out there and say what we want for fear that they may not want what we want. I got to pause here. Why are we so afraid of somebody saying, hey, not for me? Somebody saying not for me is not an indictment on you. It's a revelation of them. But so often our fear of rejection puts us in a place where we don't speak what we want. Let me tell you, when you're one of one, you got to have this kind of boldness. Yes, I would like to get to know you. That's what I would like to do. Because I'm taking authority over what I want. Now, you may not want that. Cool, no problem. I'll go to the next person that I feel God has called me to. But at least I can cross you off my list. Come on, I don't know who I'm talking to right now. But so often we're afraid. We're afraid. We're afraid of being rejected because we want to be selected. And as a result, we don't take the shots. Right now, there's an answer to prayer that God has already given you, but because you're afraid to put yourself out there, you're not receiving it. You got to shoot your shot. Sean, let me see the ball real quick, and then we're done. Yeah, so I wrote this down. I wrote this down. Uh, 12,345. Anybody know what that number is? The amount of shots Michael Jordan missed. There we go. 13,892 shots. You know how many shots that is? The number of shots that LeBron James has missed. 14,481 shots. The number of shots that Kobe Bryant missed. History does not record the shots you missed. History only records the shot that you make. I don't know who I'm talking to. You got to start taking your shot. Some are going to go in. Some won't. It won't matter. On your deathbed, you're not going to regret the shots you took. You will regret the shots you didn't. I don't know who I'm talking to right now. Somebody got to get that power and confidence into your spirit and say, I'm taking my shot. I might miss some, but guess what? I know I'm the greatest. Why? Because greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. So some of my shots are going to go in. And here's the truth. I don't need every shot to go in. I just need that one destiny shot to go in. Who am I talking to right now? Hey! Hey! Get out of your fear. You got to get into your destiny. You got to step into your shot. Step into your real rhythm. Step into your power. Some will go, some won't. It don't matter. All that matters is you had enough faith to take the shot. And while you're standing, Ruth said to Naomi, I'm going to take my shot. And she went and did what Naomi instructed. And Boaz said, cool, I'm interested, but there's a process we have to go through first. Because while I'm in the bloodline, there's one who's closer. Boaz goes and says to the one who's closer, hey, do you want the inheritance of the land from Naomi? And as part of that deal, you have to accept Ruth as your husband. Boaz was so committed to God. He was not worried that offering Ruth in this dynamic to someone else was going to take him away from what was already his. What's yours is yours. Who is yours is yours. You, you, you. The more you stand for God, the more he's going to bring you. I don't know who I'm talking to. So watch this. The man that Boaz went to rejected Ruth. No, I don't want it because it's going to mess up my inheritance. Boaz said, thank you. You have fallen right into my plan. Boaz and Ruth get married. They have Obed. Obed is the father of Jesse. Jesse is the father of David. And y'all know who came through the bloodline of David? A savior named Jesus. Because Ruth had enough courage to take her shot to somebody. You don't even know how you're setting up generations to come. If you would just get out of your fear and take your shot and let God do the rest. We are over time. If you would open up those.
your stances right now. If you need that curse of fear of rejection to be broken off, you get down to this, uh, this uh, uh, altar right now, please. If you've been dealing with fear of rejection and, and you haven't sent the email and you haven't sent the text message and you've obsessed over reaching out to somebody to ask for help, I don't know who I'm talking to. Get down to this altar right now. I want to pray over you. Come on. Yes. What is fear? What are you afraid of? Fear. Absolutely. Fear is the belief that something or someone is going to cause pain. You can make room. You can make room. Come on, get, get closer. Get closer. And so what happens is that when you believe that putting yourself out there will cause pain, you stop doing it. And then as a result, you never live in the fullness because you're timid and you're afraid and you're scared. And I don't want to say the wrong thing and I don't want to do the wrong thing. But may I submit for your consideration, you might say some things. That's part of life. You learn. It's okay. Not everybody's going to like what you have. It's okay. But don't let that get you out of who you want to be. If you are powerful, if you are creative, if you are confident, step into that. Fear is crippling someone here. It's literally robbing you of your life because you're so afraid of how you're going to look. Get the vanity out of your victory. Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Everybody takes shots that don't go in. It's life. Don't let the enemy speak to you something that God's not saying. God's not saying don't step out on faith. Faith that works is dead. Step out. You, you've talked yourself into rejection is going to create pain. No, it won't. Maybe the rejection actually reveals who you are. Rejection, I believe, is God's redirection. I believe that. So when we know, okay, you know what? That person wasn't for me or that job wasn't for me. Okay, God, where do you want me to go? Who do you want me to be with? Don't internalize the rejection. If somebody is saying, hey, not for me, they're not saying something's wrong with you. They're just articulating their preference. Our whole life is a series of, of rejection and selection. And I want you to select well. But in order to receive selection, you got to endure rejection, and it's all right. So what? They say we weren't interested, and move on to the next. Like, no, literally, we get so caught up. Well, I don't want to say the wrong thing, and I don't want to be embarrassed. Be embarrassed. And guess what? You can't be embarrassed in front of the king. And you can't be embarrassed in front of God. Just do, do you. Be the one of one you are. I want this week to be the week where you send the email, you send the text, come on, you make the phone call, come on, you push, you put whatever status you gotta put on LinkedIn, I don't know, you, you may need to let somebody know you're interested, you, 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 come on, whatever it is, shoot your shot, shoot your shot, and I promise you, and we're gonna pray, as you face this fear of rejection, and you step into the power of selection, your life changes. Because then you say, hey, it don't matter. I can get a thousand no's. All I need is one yes. That's it. One yes. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Just one yes. Amen. One yes. One yes. One yes. Do me a favor. Put your ones in the air, please. Put your ones in the air. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray right now for everyone in the building and watching online. I pray if you're listening to this prayer that you would know you are one of one. You are God's best. He loves you. You are love, you are worthy, and you are valuable, and you are valued. I pray right now, if you're listening to this prayer, you would no longer allow fear to stop you from being who God called you to be. That you would step into motion and take the shot he's called you to take and not worry about the result. I pray that you would allow faith to complement your works. I pray that you would not worry about someone not seeing you because God's going to send the right person to see you. I pray if you're listening to this prayer that you would just become everything he's called you to be unapologetically. That you would stop making yourself small so others can be big and you would just be everything he's called you to be. I pray right now if you're listening to this prayer that you would know you are one of one. There will be none before you. There are none after you. Stand in the power of that truth. 
And I pray right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would break the spirit of the fear of rejection off of every person listening to this prayer. I pray that this prayer would set people free into their destiny. This is our prayer in the mighty, holy, matchless name of Jesus Christ. Let God's children say amen. Amen. Go ahead and give God a hand praise. Come on, you can do better than that. 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 Give God praise. Anybody feel better now than when you came in? Who am I talking to right now? Come on, somebody. Hey. Ooh. Listen. I feel like we just had like, like we're the army and we just had a strategy session. And I feel like we about to march up out of here and take what's ours. I cannot wait to hear the testimonies of all of your shots. I cannot wait because there's some shots that are about to go in and your life is about to change. Who am I talking to right now? Yes! Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Now, before we leave, I just got to ask the question. Is there anyone here who wants to accept Jesus as your personal Savior? Is there anyone here? Just raise your hand. Is there anyone here you want to accept Jesus as your personal Savior? Amen. 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 I see you. Amen. Amen. I see you. Amen. Is there anyone else? You've been debating and delaying, but today something broke in you and you said, I got to do it today. Who am I talking to? There we go. Amen. Amen. God bless you, my brother. Come on, one church. You can do better than that. Who else? Who else? Who else? I see you, my brother. God bless you. Come on. Come on. I see you. Amen. Who else? Who else? Anyone else want to accept Jesus as your personal savior? Amen. God bless you, my sister. Come on. Come on. God bless you. God bless you. Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else? I see you, my sister. God bless you. Come on. I see you. I see you. I see you. I see you. Who else? Who else? I see you, my sister. God bless you. Come on, one church. Celebrate like you would if you were watching your favorite team win. I don't know who I'm talking to, but Team Jesus wins eternally. So give it up for those that are joining Team Jesus today. Hey, hey, come on, somebody. Yes. Woo. Before we close, is there anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? There we go. God bless you. I see you. Amen. 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 Anyone else? We're over our time. Anyone else? God bless you. I see you, my brother. God bless you. God bless you. Anyone else? Oh, wow. The young kid. Two brothers? God bless you. Amen. My brother, my wow. Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? I see you. I see you. God bless you, my sister. God bless you. Amen. Amen. For those of you that raised your hand, I want to pray over you right now. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray right now for those watching online and in this building that have accepted Jesus as their personal Savior. I pray for those that have made that decision. I just want you to know that you are born again today. I just want to say welcome to the kingdom. I want to say happy birthday because today is the day that you're born again. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Y'all, we are way over time. Here's the last thing I want to say about the power of shooting your shot. I can't speak a lot about it, but I'm going to tell you this. A good friend of mine, great friend of mine, was in a meeting with one of the top streamers in the country. And the meeting was about a project that they wanted him to do. And at the end of the meeting, he felt impressed. God was saying, shoot your shot about your bigger vision. And he said, well, God, what, what if they say no? And God said, well, what if they say yes? <laughs> so at the end of the meeting, he says, hey, I have a bigger vision on how to make content for people of faith. And they said, really, let's do another meeting. He met with the head, one head of, the, of this company. He met with other heads of the company. Within the course of about six to eight weeks, this company has made an unprecedented commitment to make content for people of faith. And, and, and you're going to hear about it. You're going to hear about it. It's, it's a game changer what has just happened. One of the biggest companies in the world sees the value of investing in the kingdom. But the investment would not have happened if he didn't shoot his shot. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but you don't even realize 
what's on the other side of your shock? What's on the other side of your fear? What's on the other side of your frustration? Who am I talking to? Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh. Ah, we gotta go. We gotta go. Uh, God just told me to say this. Turn your neighbor and say, you, you don't know you're standing next to a millionaire. You didn't know that. <laughs> uh, you, you may not know. You may not know who you're standing next to. <laughs> Anybody receive that in your spirit? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this moment where we shoot our shot and let you do the rest. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you, family. Well, I just believe and know that that word ministered to you as they often always do. Remember to subscribe so that you can continue to experience this rich. We'll send you a reminder. If you want to sow into this ministry, we are reaching people, as you know, all around the world. And we need your help and your support to not just bless people spiritually, but practically in all the ways that we do. The giving instructions are on the screen. Sow into this and may the Lord bless you abundantly in every way. God bless you. We'll see you next week.